Number 9. Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon In 2014, Dutch students Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon traveled to Panama and stayed with a host family who lived on the edge of the jungle. They planned to spend a few weeks backpacking before doing some volunteer work at a local school. The pair set out for an afternoon hike on April the 1st with their host family's dog, but the dog returned to the home alone that evening. Chris and Lizanne were still missing the next morning when their host decided it was time to contact law enforcement. Local residents and the authorities embarked on a 10-day ground and aerial search, but failed to find the women. Right as the case started to go cold, someone turned in a backpack containing both Chris and Lizanne's cell phones and a camera. The phones remained on for nearly 10 days after they disappeared, and they had tried to call police 77 times. Their first attempts to call began just hours after they started their hike. The film inside the camera turned up even more disturbing evidence. A collection of photos taken in the early morning hours a week into the girls' disappearance shows their belongings spread out on rocks, mounds of dirt, and a bleeding wound on Kremer's temple. Two months after the pair vanished, police found their bones. The remains were too decomposed to identify a cause of death, and the circumstances surrounding their death remain a mystery. Number 8. Brittany Drexel 17-year-old Brittany Drexel didn't tell her mom before leaving her home in the Rochester, New York area for a spring break trip with friends in 2009. Dawn Drexel had already told her daughter that she couldn't travel to Myrtle Beach, but Brittany went anyway. A few days into the vacation, Brittany left the hotel the group was staying at to visit a friend about a mile and a half, 2.4 kilometers away. Surveillance shows her entering the Blue Water Resort, then leaving a little while later. Brittany stopped texting her boyfriend, John Greco, shortly after that, so he called her friends to check on her. When they didn't know where she was, Greco called Brittany's mom, who got the authorities involved. Police interviewed a nightclub promoter who was last seen with the teen and couldn't rule him in or out. Brittany's cell phone last pinged in the early morning between 50 and 60 miles, 80 to 97 kilometers south of Myrtle Beach, before abruptly going dead. Dawn moved to the area to be closer to where her daughter had disappeared. She suspected that Brittany was trafficked. Law enforcement claimed that human trafficking wasn't a major issue in the area, but in 2019, the South Carolina China Human Trafficking Task Force rated Horry County as the top county in the state for reported victims. Meanwhile, the FBI concluded that Brittany was probably murdered and offered a $25,000 reward for information solving the case. Two jailhouse informants claimed to have seen her being abused inside the home of a man named Timothy Taylor. They said that Taylor originally tried to sell Brittany to traffickers but decided to kill her when the case gained widespread attention. But he was never charged, and his mother told the press earlier this year that she wants people to stop associating her son with Brittany's disappearance, since there's no compelling evidence against him in the case. Number 7. Robin Gardner In 2011, 35-year-old Robin Gardner told her boyfriend that she was taking a family trip to Aruba when, in reality, she was going there with her secret lover, Gary Giordano. The clandestine couple went snorkeling on a secluded beach when, according to Giordano, they got caught in a rip current and started drifting further and further out to sea. He managed to make it to shore, but had lost sight of Robin amid the panic. Giordano went to a nearby restaurant and summoned help. To many, he seemed oddly calm about the ordeal, so calm in fact that the Aruban authorities suspected him of foul play. They caught him trying to leave the country and jailed him for four months, but they ultimately lacked enough evidence to continue holding Giordano and released him. He remains a suspect in the case, and Robin's family and friends also think he harmed her. Speaking with local TV news, Giordano adamantly insisted that Robin drowned. Her body has never been found, but he refuses to call the case a disappearance. Investigators found photos on his camera that they would only describe as beyond pornographic, and they discovered that Giordano had taken out a $1.5 million accidental death insurance policy shortly before the trip. 
Witnesses who had seen the couple dining together shortly before Robin vanished said that it was odd she had gone snorkeling. She just looked too put together to want to go into the water and ruin her hair and makeup. Others said that she appeared woozy at the restaurant and had only picked at her salad. A man who was fishing along the beach the couple supposedly went snorkeling on said that they never got into the water, but that they had driven off shortly before Robin disappeared. Giordano was never charged, and we may not ever know what happened to Robin, but it's unfortunately probably safe to say that she's not going to return home alive. Number 6. John Halford John Halford had a good life. He owned a successful bookstore in England, and he and his wife raised three kids together. But things took a left turn in 2011 when the marriage became rocky as it approached its 25th anniversary. The couple also ran into some money problems. Out of the blue, Halford decided to take an expensive solo cruise to Egypt. The 63-year-old was eager to check the trip off his bucket list before arthritis made it impossible to do so. Everything seemed to be going fine until the last night of the cruise. Halford was last seen drinking cocktails at one of the ship's bars shortly before he disappeared without a trace. His belongings, including his wallet, passport, and souvenirs he had bought, were left behind in his cabin. Given the nature of his circumstances at the time, authorities believed it was possible that Halford had jumped to his death, but his wife insisted that he remained in good spirits, despite their struggles. If he hadn't jumped, investigators concluded that he must have fallen overboard, although many have pointed out that this would have been difficult to do on a ship with railings that were three and a half feet, 1.1 meters high. In the absence of any suspicious findings, however, there was no reason to think that foul play was involved. A judge declared Halford dead in 2018. His wife has accepted that he's probably no longer alive, but reported feeling a lingering lack of closure since nobody truly knows what happened to him. Number 5. Natalie Holloway After finishing high school as a straight-A student in 2005, Natalie Holloway traveled to Aruba with her classmates for their senior trip. Several days after arriving, she met a 17-year-old Dutch national named Joran van der Sloot at her hotel. Natalie was last seen leaving in a car with van der Sloot and two of his friends in the early morning hours. When it came time for the recent graduates to leave the island, the Alabama teen was nowhere to be found. Van der Sloot told police that he dropped Natalie back off at her hotel, but was unable to substantiate his claim. Meanwhile, volunteers began searching for the missing young woman. Nobody turned up any trace of Natalie. Investigators tested hair strands for DNA, drained a pond, and went to other extremes to try finding her. But it was literally as if she had vanished into thin air. While Van der Sloot remains at the top of the suspect list to this day, law enforcement hasn't found any evidence to allow them to convict. He even offered to lead Natalie's family to her body, but all he provided them with were dead ends in exchange for large sums of money that he demanded, and video evidence of Van der Sloot admitting to killing Natalie still wasn't enough to connect him to her disappearance. In 2010, he traveled to Peru where he killed a 21-year-old woman named Stephanie Flores Ramirez. He pled guilty to that murder and received a 28-year prison sentence. Natalie was declared dead in absentia in 2012. All signs point towards Van der Sloot being her killer, but her remains were never found. If he ends up facing justice for Natalie's death, it won't be until after he's served his time in Peru and is extradited back to Dutch territory. Number 4. Dior Coons During the summer of 2015, Jessica Mitchell and Vernal Dior Coons took their two-year-old son, Dior Coons, on a camping trip to the Timber Creek Campground in Idaho. They were joined by Dior's great-grandfather, Robert Walton, and a family friend named Isaac Reinwald. Things took a terrifying turn when Jessica and Vernal mistakenly thought that Robert Walton was watching their toddler. In the meantime, he was under the impression that the tyke was under his parents' watchful eye. Dior has never been seen since that day, despite an extensive search by law enforcement. His parents, Walton and Reinwald, all claimed that they had no idea what happened to the little boy. But Jessica and Vernal have reportedly failed multiple polygraph exams, and detectives say that the details of their stories don't add up. 
Two private investigators hired by the family have said that they believe Dior's parents had something to do with his disappearance. At the same time, there's very little evidence to suggest that the couple harmed their son. Investigators are treating the case as a homicide, and they hope to catch a break that will enable them to bring the perpetrator to justice. What do you think happened to Dior? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more mysterious disappearances. Number 3. Later Lynn Cords. Later Lynn Cords and her husband, Frank, had a troubled marriage that was affected by infidelity and personal losses. Hoping to escape the problems that had plagued them for quite some time, the couple built their dream vacation home on the Caribbean island of St. Martin in 2007. After leaving a gathering with friends in early 2008, Later allegedly decided she wanted to visit a local casino. She had drunk quite a bit and wasn't even walking straight and Frank wouldn't let her take the car, so she walked. Frank initially stayed behind, but he wanted to make sure Later had reached her destination safely, so he went to go look for her. He didn't find his wife, but he assumed she had made it to the casino, so he returned home. Later never returned home, and she hasn't been seen since. It soon came to light that even though she and Frank claimed to be working on their marriage, they still fought a lot behind closed doors, and a divorce wasn't off the table. What's more, Later's friends had become concerned about her heavy drinking and prescription pill abuse in recent months. Frank told police that he and his wife had never had a violent encounter, despite their problems. But they still considered him a person of interest, and so did Later's friends, who believe that for her to disappear without a trace, something bad must have happened. Frank was arrested, but there wasn't enough evidence to charge him in the disappearance, and he was released after being held for three months. Unfortunately, Later's friends and family have no choice but to live without answers for now. Number 2. Eileen Christie As a teacher and a nun in Brentwood, Long Island, Eileen Christie had a wholesome lifestyle. It simply wasn't like her to run in bad circles, get caught up in mischief, or land herself in bad situations by being reckless. But trouble apparently found her in 2016, when the 72-year-old took a trip to the Austrian Alps. Christie certainly wasn't young, but she was an experienced traveler, and her loved ones didn't expect anything to go wrong during the solo vacation. But the retired nun's email updates stopped coming several days into the trip, and her concerned family contacted Austrian authorities to report her missing. Police found most of Christie's belongings, including her wallet, passport, and cell phone, at a hostel she was staying at. She appeared happy in the images on her camera. The woman's bathing suit was missing, leading investigators to wonder if she drowned while taking a swim. But she was a good swimmer and had traveled to Austria several times before, so she was familiar with the area. Christie remains missing, and her friends and relatives are no closer to receiving answers than they were on day one. Her disappearance serves as a sobering reminder that even the most responsible and experienced traveler can get caught in harm's way. Number 1. Norman Lee While snorkeling in the Cayman Islands in 2015, comic book artist Norman Lee somehow became separated from his wife Jan and drifted out of sight. Jan arrived on shore alone and went for help. As a former college fencer, Lee was well built, giving his loved ones hope that he had somehow survived and would soon turn up alive. Unfortunately, that never happened. Royal Caribbean authorities called off their search for Lee just a few days after he went missing. They said that a recovery was highly unlikely because of the strong current in the area, and reassured the public that they had put all available resources into trying to find Lee. The talented 47-year-old had worked for both Marvel and DC Comics throughout his 20-year career. His artwork was featured in popular titles such as X-Men and The Avengers. He was an inker, meaning that he was responsible for filling in the final lines on the characters. Lee's disappearance sparked widespread grief among comic book enthusiasts and fellow artists throughout the world. The investigation remained open, and in 2016, the FBI offered a $10,000 reward for information leading to his recovery, or a conviction in the case, although it's unclear where the foul play was involved. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about disappearances like the ones we covered today, leave a comment below. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. And until next time, stay safe out there.